Now, when I start this segment, I just want to kind of start it out by saying, if you ever think about criticizing LeBron James, stop, think about it, and don't say it. Welcome back to the Sports Fall. I'm Jersey Joe Archino, and I think if most of you have followed me, and if you haven't, I am the ultimate LeBron James defender. And look, you can't criticize him for anything that happened in this NBA Finals. Setting the record for points, assists, and rebounds, the 40-point games that he had, he did something that no other player in NBA history could have done. Not Magic Johnson, not Larry Bird, not Michael Jordan, not Kobe Bryant, nobody. Now, there is this sense of infallibility on Michael Jordan that has been instilled by the media because when Michael Jordan had his run and was unbelievable, look, he is still the greatest basketball player of all time. But the media created this infallibility sense that he could do no wrong. Michael Jordan did a lot of wrong, folks, from infidelity to gambling to punching teammates. Michael was far from perfect, and Michael had the help that LeBron never had. Now, you don't. I'm not talking about the, the Miami days. LeBron had good teams in Miami. The first team he brought to the finals was the worst re- roster in NBA Finals history. Maybe, I mean, I mean, and it's comparable to this one without Kyrie Irving and without Kevin Love. Michael never had to do that. Now, going 6-0 in the NBA Finals is something that's incredible. But this is a guy who had arguably one of the top 50 players of all time in Scottie Pippen. Injuries were something, the injury bug never really bit Michael Jordan. And when you look at the surrounding players that he had, it's like when LeBron won those first two championships. He had Ray Allen, he had Shane Battis. I mean, when you look at the first run that he had, he had lethal shooters like John Paxson. He had guys like Bill Cartwright, guys like Horace Grant, who Horace Grant was a tremendous basketball player. The roster that Michael had for both sets, and then you look at the second three that he won after his break from baseball, Dennis Rodman, Tony Kukoc, who was the best European player, a deadly three-point shooter. Michael had all the talent. It wasn't just Michael Jordan. He had outstanding basketball teams, and look, he also had the best basketball coach of all time, which kind of helps, and they ran a system that no one else could figure out. And then when you look at Magic, it's the same thing. Now, Magic had moments where guys like of his were hurt, but again, he still had James Worthy. Big Game James. You know why that's his nickname? Because in big games, he always showed up, and he put up big points. Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Parrish, all of these guys had help. Kobe Bryant, you look at him when he won his, his three in a row, the three-peat, Shaq, great players like Robert Ory, good role players, Phil Jackson. There was a lull in there. What happened? Once you give him some more talent, you have Lamar Odom, you have Pau pa- Gasol, he starts winning again. In the NBA, there is there it just it, it's simple. You need players around you. One player can't do it all. There's two teams in NBA history who you could probably make an argument for, and that's the Milwaukee Bucks with Oscar Robertson towards the end of his career and a young Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and then the 2011 Dallas Mavericks team that beat the Heat. That's about it. And I I just think the the proof is in the pudding. Teams, when you lose your two best players, you're probably not going to win. To even win two of these games just shows LeBron's greatness. To make this as competitive game and game out as it is speaks volumes. Look, and I, I part of me just laughs it off. When you see people criticize LeBron, they really don't know the game because, look, it's one thing if you don't like LeBron, but if you don't acknowledge that he's the best player in the world and one of the best of all time, then you just, you're a moron. I'm sorry to say I don't want to be harsh, but you're a moron if you don't think it because to do what he did in this finals, if you watched all six games of the NBA finals and you still can't acknowledge his greatness, you just don't know what you're talking about and you should probably be watching something else. But it just it's sensational what he did there. And look, I think Cleveland's going to be back in the NBA finals. I think it's funny because I thought about this and I've thought about it all year. When you look at the at the Miami Heat, LeBron's first year, and you look at Cleveland, his first year back, they're so strikingly similar that it's amazing. 
when you look at that team in Miami, they, they have that rough start. They start 9-8, and eight, then they win like 20 games in a row, make it to the NBA Finals, lose LeBron. It was the only moment in his career I re- legitimately think he deserves criticism for. He disappeared in the fourth quarter of those games. He didn't play well enough. Quite different this one, but I think the storyline and the pattern is the same. Cleveland starts off very rough. Then they go on a little winning streak. They go on another bad losing streak. David Blatt's job is in major jeopardy. Then they win 12 games in a row. They make the trades. They get to the NBA Finals. The injuries happen, and they lose, and LeBron plays and phenomenally well. But I think the patterns of both are going to also follow similar in year two. I think year one, it's feeling things out. You're building the chemistry. You're learning things with your new teammates. The culture, the chemistry has been instilled. It's about the offseason now. That's one thing that the Miami Heat did extraordinarily well, bouncing back from that finals loss, is they filled the roster with exactly what they needed to. They drafted Norris Cole, and you saw in that series, J.J. Barea shredded them. They had nobody who could defend a small guy like J.J. Barea. They draft Norris Cole. He steps up big time. Shane Battier was money. Mike Miller was much healthier. They overall filled out the roster much better, bringing in veteran presence like guys like Shane Battier. Shane Battier is as much a part of that championship as anybody was because having veteran guys like that make the world of difference. Cleveland, that's one thing, and I think the benches for Miami their first year with LeBron and with Cleveland are also very comparable because the benches didn't have enough the first year with Miami. The bench didn't have enough. J.R. Smith and Shumpert, look, I give them credit because I wasn't a big fan when the trade was made, but they proved me wrong. They shut me up. They played very, very well. You really can't say too much bad things about them in the regular season. But in the NBA Finals, my goodness, they were atrocious. J.R. Smith looked like he was lost, like his mind was wandering in, in, a, in a doomless pit or something. Shumpert's defense, defense was there, but his offense was equally as bad as J.R. Smith. And again, it just shows you, you need to fill out this roster better. Now, it's going to be an interesting offseason because I think, obviously, number one, Tristan Thompson's getting paid. LeBron, if you read all the articles, he has a lot of say in the offseason for the Cavaliers. I think it's smart. Uh, You've got to make the guy happy. If you don't, if he's not happy, nobody's happy. Tristan Thompson proved it all year. He's going to get a lot more credit now because on the national stage, everyone saw this guy can play. If you watch the Cavs all year like I did, you know this guy is outstanding. I really think he's the best situational rebounder in basketball. I really do. His offensive game is not there yet. Uh, It's still a work in progress. He did switch his shooting. He used to be a right-handed. Now he's a left-handed guy. I think Tristan deserves to get paid. He honestly, if if you made me choose today between Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson, I'm taking Tristan Thompson. Kevin Love is a better basketball player, but Tristan Thompson is a better fit for what the Cavaliers are trying to do. And clearly, Tristan Thompson is going to get paid. He's earned it. His play's been stellar. They need him bad. Kevin Love is the big, big question mark now. I, I think he clearly expects to be paid max money and that is tough I I mean look was he a little bit killed too much yes he got did get a little bit unfair criticism but at the same time he's not the same player he wasn't I mean his numbers it wasn't like Chris Bosh where Chris Bosh just Chris Bosh's presence on the floor created so much space and that's the same thing with Kevin Love but at the same time you just don't know if he's fitting into what Cleveland wants to do now Bosch kind of had to give it up but at the same time with both of them they create a lot of space so bringing back Kevin Love does make sense and I do think in my gut he will be back because look if he goes to LA for uh, after Cleveland LA it's going to take LA six seven years to really be back to being a relevant team in, in the NBA finals or even in the NBA playoffs for that matter if he chases the money and goes to LA and plays for a team that's just not relevant right now I think it'd be a bad look and I, I just would be very surprised if he's not back in Cleveland but 
the core of this comes down to improving the bench because the one thing that you, you still, and I think they learn from, is when LeBron is off the floor, I mean, look, when you have Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, that certainly helps. But, I mean, you need to bring in more veteran presence. Guys like I mean, Sean Marion played a lot towards the beginning of the season, barely saw any action towards the later half. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do because there are guys like Mike Dunleavy's out there who I think would be an interesting fit. You certainly, I mean, look, is J.R. Smith going to be back? I don't know. Uh, he served his purpose for a while, but my philosophy is always guys like that who are a knucklehead always are going to resort back to being a knucklehead, and that's just always what JR has been, and I think it's hard to erase a culture like that from a guy who's shown always to be that's what he is, but I think Cleveland will win the NBA title next year. I think it plays out so much like and just think about it. Sit down. If you followed the game of basketball for a long time now, if you look at what happened in Miami, LeBron's first year, and you look at what happened in Cleveland his first year, they are starkingly similar, and I think they are going to do follow suit like Miami did and win it all in year two. Look, clearly it all comes down to health. If Kyrie is healthy, they win that series. It's just the bottom line. For me, I mean, I've said it a lot this year. I think for me... I felt at points Kyrie was the best teammate LeBron ever had. Now, people are going to go crazy saying, look, come on, Dwayne Wade's the guy who's won three titles, one of the greatest players of all time. Absolutely. And I, I still don't think Kyrie's the same level as Dwayne Wade. But you've also got to remember that Dwayne Wade was also injured a lot during LeBron's time. Now, in the NBA Finals, he always found a way. He always found a way and played better. Big time. He always showed up and was money. But I think Kyrie has something he didn't. Dwayne Wade, I mean, look, it's hard to criticize a player who's been as good as that, but he's never been really a perimeter-oriented player. He has developed a little bit more into that. But for the most part, his game has always been around attacking the basket. And that's why I think he's he's kind of diminishing his physically is because of how much, how much time he's spent getting hacked and attacked from playing at the basket. But I think Kyrie had came into the league with a perimeter game. He's an outstanding... He could really score from anywhere on the floor. He handles the ball incredibly well. The one piece that was missing from his game was on a defensive floor. And he added that. He is now an outstanding defensive player. Kyrie and LeBron have something. The two of them together have something special. And... I think those two alone, with a, even without Kevin Love, if you have Tristan Thompson and Mozgov and you fix this bench, are going to win an NBA title. I think they're going to be in the next three NBA finals because, the, let's be honest, the East stinks right now. The Bulls don't scare you. I mean, I'm sorry. They're going to compete, but they don't. Atlanta is a cute story, but they're the Atlanta, they're the Arizona Cardinals of the NFL. You don't win without superstars. I mean, look, the fact that guys like Al Horford and Paul Millsap can be elevated the way that they are in the Eastern Conference shows you how weak the Eastern Conference is. Now in, in the second year, this is going to be a heck of a Cleveland team. They get back to the finals, and I do think that they win it. But again, the bottom line here is, if you're thinking about criticizing LeBron, don't. You can't do it. What he did in this NBA Finals is something we'll never see again. Well, you will not have seen Michael Jordan. Look, and again, no one's going to agree with me, but that's okay because it's the truth. Because there is a sense of infallibility that Michael could do no wrong. The people who grew up and watched him, even today, the people who listen to the people who grew up seeing him, just feel like this is a guy who could never do anything wrong. And you look... Look at what happened to him in North Carolina. You, James Worthy leaves, can't win another title. His first, he, he lost in the first round of the NBA playoffs three times. You know how many times LeBron has lost in the first round of the NBA, final, uh, NBA playoffs, folks? Zero. They're different players. LeBron does something. Look, LeBron, it does remind me a lot from a story point of Will Chamberlain. Everybody always likes to compare Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. Bill Russell had all the players. Will Chamberlain didn't. Will Chamberlain, if you put him on that Celtics team, it's this different way around. Will 
Bill wins two, Will wins the 11. It's just the way it is. Sometimes guys have have luck with health. Sometimes guys have better support. That's what it comes down to, and LeBron didn't have the support. I think if Kyrie is healthy, they're winning it all next year, but there are certainly a lot of things that are going to happen. Shifting for a little while, though, and then we'll come back. I don't know what we're going to go to next. Maybe more basketball. I think NBA draft, yeah. We're going to go to NBA draft next, then do a little bit of soccer, but stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Got a lot of good stuff on the NBA draft, especially... I think, look, if you watch the NBA Finals, you see where the game is going. It's a perimeter league now, and I think, what does that say about Julia Okafor? Well, I'll say next, so don't go anywhere. Be right back.